Yediga Assisi is battling with the gods and titans. His drawings are reconstructing the fragmented remains of the Pergamon frieze as part of his panorama picture of the ancient city. He's been working on this one aspect alone for more than a year. You need motivation to work on a project like this, otherwise you can't do it. You need a basic idea, a driving force to do it. The freeze is only a fraction of the picture. Yadigar Sisi is not only reconstructing the embellishment on the Pergamon altar, he's virtually resurrecting the entire ancient metropolis. A computer helps him compose the gigantic panoramic picture, as yet unfinished. He's bringing Pergamon back to life from photos, 3D animations and drawings. Panoramas are almost unbelievable for those who haven't seen any. They create a life-size impression. When you leave, you don't feel like you are looking at a picture. You feel as if you traveled back to the year 129 and were actually on the Pergamon Hill. That's the phenomenon. It's three-dimensional and feels very real. Two years ago in Leipzig, Yadiga Assisi completed Amazonia, his fourth panorama picture of that scale. At 106 meters long and 30 meters high, it was the largest in the world. For 15 years now, supersized panoramas have been his passion. Over the years, he's also developed a special production process. 40 panels of fabric are printed and then sewn together in a rented hall over the course of six weeks. Yadigar Assisi has probed dimensions that no other panorama artist has. The production phase is an exciting time for him. He can examine his work in the original size only after it has been printed. The logistics involved in hanging up the picture are a challenge. The fabric weighs more than half a ton. We feel space only when we stay still and hail it. We understand it when we're still. Movement is not important to sense it. I think panoramas give us that peace and the viewer becomes the master of his view, his perception. Unlike a movie scene where we have to see things at a set speed, you can stay in a panorama for five minutes or an hour. But you leave with a spatial impression. And for a constellation like this, of objects put in context, panorama is an ideal medium. The new panorama is due to be exhibited here in a few months. A rotunda is being constructed at Berlin's Pergamon Museum specially for the purpose. Yadiga Assisi wants to put archaeological finds such as the Pergamon altar back in their original context. But many parts were never found, so Assisi has to get creative. And for that, he's working closely with the museum's antiquities collection researchers. I came here first as a child and later at least a hundred times with my students. We did a lot of drawings together. But it wasn't until now, after being so involved, that I really understand things. I believe that people who see the panorama and the exhibition together will discover things that they perhaps can't even begin to comprehend yet. I'm becoming more aware of this all the time. I see these things to be more complex now. I see things now that I didn't before. Today, only the ruins of Pergamon remain. Last year, Assisi took more than 30,000 photos for his panorama of the ancient city in what is now Turkey. He used 70 extras in his shots. And he took his pictures from a single position, the one from which visitors will look upon the ancient Pergamon. From the ground, a 15-meter-high horizon in a picture looks like a picture hanging around us. It's imposing because of its size. But the moment you move towards the horizon line, its three-dimensionality unfolds. So the storyline has to be calculated from the viewer's perspective. Today's picture of Pergamon is a collage of drawings, 3D animations and photos, which together portray an everyday scene from the city in the first century. If you watch me work, you'd think that I'm drawing the whole time. For me, it's all painting, just with different media. From September on, 
Yadiga Assisi's rendering of life in ancient Pergamon will be on display in Berlin.